Today at the breakfast, bandits attack commuters along the Abuja Kaduna Highway, uh, abducted an unspecified number of travelers. Also on the breakfast, many people reportedly killed during clash between traders and commercial motorcyclers, popularly called Okada riders at the DJ community in Abuja Municipal Area Council. And like always, we will be reviewing the major stories making headlines across major dailies. Good morning to you. This is The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. I am Messi Poko. Beautiful morning and it's good to have you join us. Yes, it is a beautiful morning. How is the morning for you? It rained in some parts of Lagos today. I don't know if it is raining around you, but whatever it is, just try and take things easy. You know how it could be when it rains uh, in Lagos, or maybe some parts of Nigeria. So just try and take things easy so you can get to your destination on time and uh, just be aware of um, how things work and, and don't try and fight people on the road. <laughs> I'm just saying that out of experience. All right, I will just slide on to top trending. Remember the um, Accountant General of the Federation uh, who was um, um, arrested by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission over um, an 80 billion Naira fraud. Well, the latest in that um, particular story is that uh, he has been suspended by the federal government. I think it's just about time. It's only logical that he gets suspended when he's, uh, you know, in um, the middle of um, an investigation. Okay, so um, so apparently we're waiting that uh, there will be a court action to wait. I mean, it, it has to be proven that he's found guilty. Yes, it, it, it has to go to court. That's a, that's a normal thing. So to do. we would say that it's a commended action by the government, right? Are you asking? No, I'm, I'm just uh, <laughs> trying to understand what all of no, this No, but means. logically, if you're in office and uh, you're involved in some sort of investigation, you have to step aside. And of course, I don't know if it's going to be an indefinite suspension. I don't know the terms, but. Um, it's, uh, it's expected, really. It's not as if it's a big thing, really, if you ask me. Mm. Well, like you said, it, it's, it's not as if it's a big deal. I mean, we no, have seen all of this process. We have seen all of this. And some people will say it's IgG. It's just... The, what does IgG mean? Oh, my initial gra, -gra. <laughs> Oh, IgG. Oh, really? So, so let's just hope that it's also not one of those, um, you know, practice or behavior and process that we have when it has to do with... A public office because right now I think that there's a lot of trust deficit the people are already questioning and querying you know the pattern and behavior of government oh we have seen this before it's nothing new what exactly is going to happen afterwards he might just be still on the salary scale I mean the getting his salary or something or probably before you just wake up and toss to the other side uh, you just imagine that he's been promoted so uh, these are <laughs> yes it's true and, and just like uh, what happened with Mago right exactly so um, people are not really excited especially for a government that says that um, they are bent on fighting corruption the reason that you came you came on you know um, a certain mantra so you see corruption the fight against corruption economy and of course security all of this seven years and counting what do we have to show for? It feels like the fight against corruption is nepotistic. It also also looks as though, um, even though the presidency and the president had taken time before having these persons as members of his cabinet. You know how long it took the president mm -hmm. to constitute members of his cabinet? Yeah, but well, what we can see on our screen right now is um, the letter of suspension, um, you know, signed by the Minister of um, Finance, uh, Zainab Ahmed, uh, well, following a recent arrest by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission on allegations of diversion of funds and money laundering, I write to convey your suspension from work without pay, effective 18th May. That's yesterday. This is to allow for proper and unhindered investigation into the serious allegations in line with public service rules 030406. Okay, so uh, it went on to say that during that period that he's not allowed to, you know, uh, be at this place of work or contact any official except for any disciplinary hearing that may be advised. Uh, it also said it's expected that um, he will strictly comply with any instructions that will be forwarded to him in his current location on unknown recorded address as stipulated in the extant rules. So, well, let's just believe the, the, the letter for what it is. Uh, he is on suspension without pay. I hope he will not be given any other appointment in the 
future. <laughs> I don't know why you're looking at me in that manner. But the point is, it's okay. I mean, it's part of the process, like you have rightly mentioned. Yes, it is. It's what's right, it's what's obtainable, that's what should have been done, or that's mm -hmm. what should be done. Yes. Uh, but how effective would that be is also another question. We're here and we'll definitely bring we'll you up to what's that. unfolding. All right, let's stay away from uh, the AGF for a bit and uh, let's talk about something that's equally uh, trending here in Lagos. Uh, commercial motorcycle um, operators, popularly known as Okada, they will not be allowed uh, you know, to apply in six local government areas as announced by the state governor, Babajide Songwulu. And uh, specifically, let me just read that uh, the local government areas are uh, Ikeja, uh, Suru Liri, Etiosa, Lagos Mainland, uh, Lagos Island, and uh, Papa Axis of the state. Mercy, a lot of people that would say that uh, this is not the first time this. Uh, but is this over. the first time? It is not. not the Lagos uh, traffic law has been is still in force. You know there is a law concerning that restricting uh, uh, this uh, Okada riders from plying. I can't remember the number of routes now in Lagos uh, since 2012. You know, uh, I remember covering transportation then. So it's been over 10 years, and uh, there's been some back and forth. Uh, you know, there's the issue of a helmet, the issue of um, some specific um, bikes that could ply, you know, some routes. But right now, specifically, indefinitely, they are saying, as the Lagos State Government is saying, that these Okada riders cannot ply, you know, along those um, six local government areas. So, I mean, it's not the first time, so it's nothing new. Let's see how all of that pans out for the Lagos State like, government. You know, it's actually... But in 20, I also think that there was a refresher in 2021, in 2020, if I'm not mistaken again, mm. where you say you're banning. Mm. Now, if you ban anything, it's been banned. Yeah, it's so still how did we, um, yes, it. So that, how did we come back to 2022 and we say you're banning all what has ban. been banned? Okay. It feels like... <laughs> You know, I think all of this is just coming up with, you know, the fracas that happened. Uh, no, but, but uh, that's not the point. Okay, what's the point? The point is, if you have done your due diligence since 2012, mm. we will not be in this position in 2022. Yes. So it means that at the end of the day, if you say there was a ban that was put out, mm. you don't need to have a quarter riders and all of this, then... Mm. All that was banned should have been banned. Yes, you know, a lot of things happen with this. You know, sometimes uh, a lot of people would say that the government soft uh, pedals when it comes to uh, times of election because uh, the bulk of, uh, you know, the supporters are from the hinterland and all of that. You know, so during the election period or an election year, they tend to just go easy on some of their rules so they don't seem as though they're trying oh, to... No. <laughs> Offend, oh, no. you know, some uh, segment of the society, and um, really, that's what people say. Really. Okay, so, and so do you think that this is actually the situation? But, but this time around, it's, it's actually different because if you if you ask What's me, different? what I mean, different as in ordinarily during an election year, they would be soft on some laws, but right now they're actually throwing the sledgehammer, despite the fact what that sledgehammer we're talking about from 2012, clamping down, clamping what down on Okada It riders. wouldn't have been if they have kept to you know the rules. If they you did. say you. For how but long? they actually relented a bit. So it, does, so it doesn't mean anything. I mean, mm. you, the, the fact that we also have a statement saying that you are banning again. Why are you banning? So that, 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 why that, are you that, banning? That, you ban the, something and you're banning that's again. You can't even ban again. Okay. In, in, initially. Because it's initially, been banned. No, initially it was not a ban. It was what? It was not a ban. <laughs> the, uh, the highlights of the Lagos traffic law of, of 2012 restricted or Kada riders from applying some major routes. But right now, what they are saying is that there will be no Okadas generally in those six areas. Before now, you could actually apply the, what did you call them, for the feeder, feeder roads. roads and everything. But right now, you cannot even apply the feeder roads along those um, uh, six corridors. So just as 20, uh, I mean, just as it happened in 2012, mm -hmm. I, I really don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how the Lagos state government is going to achieve it. Just with, all, as, as you have it with every other government, it's mm -hmm. a thing of not being effective and not being strong on policy implementation. And so it feels like we're going to go back in the same circle. Okay. So we're just going to be back and back again. Oh. Well, if you also look at the argument that's been put out, uh, it's like saying the government had woke, um, said at some point, we're going to ban the importation of foreign rice to Nigeria. So we need to ensure that, oh, there's local production. Mm. The question would be, what plans have you put in place to caution all of this effect? With feeder roads, you cannot joke. Feeder roads will always be feeder roads. And you know how this city is. 
Mm. So there are some. It's 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 almost impossible. I, I think it, I, it I, I think I think it might just be to to term, to stem the tide because of what oh, wow. just happened recently. So maybe they want a bit of an order and calmness in that area. Let's see and how. But maybe over time, I think they might um, relax some of those measures. Oh, like so, you so have so said, what's, those what's the essence then? Oh, no, for now, no, for now, there is a crisis. There, there, there are issues. There are people. Uh, someone was killed, and there are clashes in the particular area. So you wouldn't just uh, just let it be like. Uh, and you don't think that usual. that would further trigger? Um, it will further trigger a lot of actions from this other community because if you see mm. this community that we're talking about, yeah. I mean, it has a lot of strong presence. Mm -hmm. You know how those people can be. Mm. So it's also a security concern. That's, that's, it poses that's the, a lot of security that's one of the concern reasons, for the reasons. That's one of the reasons why the... Okay, let's hear from the governor. I understand that we have um, a track. Let's listen to uh, Governor Babajide Sonwole and what he said con uh, uh, precisely concerning this particular development. The whole of Ikeja local government, the whole of Sule local government, the whole of Insiosa local government, the whole of mainland local government, the whole of Apatma local government, and the whole of Lagos Island local government. In total ban, in total ban, on this and all of the islands effective from the 1st of June. This is the first banning that we are going to get back in on, so that others know in a short while, it's either to get out or for something else to do. And from 1st of June, from 1st of June, there are LCDs that are underneath them. We're going to publish them. We're going to list all of them. And so we're given the notice now, right, where you can begin to do your recce, begin to do, you know, your strategy. From the 1st of June, please to want all of the Okada to be completely of this video. The whole of Ikeja local government, the whole of Sule local government, the whole of Insiosa local government, the whole of mainland local government, the whole of Apatma local government, and the whole of Lagos Island local government. A total ban, a total ban on this and all of the islands effective from the 1st of June. This is the first banning that we are going to be embarking on. So that others know that in a short while, it's either to get out or for something else to do. And from 1st of June, from 1st of June, there are, there are LCDs that are underneath them. We're going to publish them. We're going to list all of them. And so we're given the notice now, right, where you can begin to do your recce, begin to do, you know, your strategy. From the 1st of June, please to want all of all right, welcome back uh, there. You just heard from the Lagos State Government uh, talking specifically about um, this uh, new development and the six local governments involved. And uh, the governor said it is a total and indefinite ban. Mm, okay. <laughs> Why is that okay? Are you okay? It sounds very okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's commendable of mm. the governor to say all of that, but let's see how the implementation goes. Mm. Um, the Lagos State Government, with the ban, has not been very effective in implementing the ban, so we don't know how this would go. Maybe this would just be a change mm. that everyone has been expecting. But the next question would be, if you make this ban, have you also considered other factors? For instance, I, I know that in some states who say we're banning Okada, from the roads, but mm. you have the fact that the major roads, they can't ply the major okay. roads, and so they will still have to deal with the feeder roads mm. because some people live in communities where would, would, it's a feeder road because it takes you to the road, the major road. Mm. That's why it's a feeder road. So it can't take, so if you take um, a passenger from a certain location, and um, of course they live in a feeder road, so the feeder road leads to the major road. Mm. So what happens? Because no, sometimes I think, you I think there are becomes, alternatives. There are two, what alternatives? Alternative? No, you, you don't. No, you, they have. No, for some roads, I don't know, may, maybe not in all um, local government areas, uh, but some the feeder roads, uh, they still have um, uh, this uh, commercial uh, motor, um, um, tricycles you know uh that still operate there that uh, walk up uh, within um roads i know that i see some of them along um, a limo show and they still have some of these uh mini vans uh locally uh, it's, called them uh, cork bay or something that yeah, also it's, it's actually it's actually well. not it's actually not in all you know in all mm. the local government and like mm. we would say it can be difficult mm. where you have to walk like 20 
um, you know, 20 minutes or 25 minutes to get to the feeder road. It's a lot of time right there. So um, I doubt, I doubt how this is going to pan out, but let's see how it works out. If you look at history and antecedent, <laughs> uh, we haven't really fed Have well. some faith. Have faith well. can well, move mountains. Faith without uh, works is dead. So now you're preachifying me. Come <laughs> on. Deacon has mercy. All right, let us uh, move away from the Lagos, uh, you know, traffic law and um, the ban on um, Okada in six local government areas. I think it's a season of, uh, well, it's not really new because uh, uh, when you find things like this happening, you wonder what happens uh, to people, uh, uh, morality, what happens to people's, uh, you know, sense of um, reasoning. And um, for instance, uh, when you are placed to manage funds uh, in an area that, um, you know, has been um, marginalized us, allegedly managed, marginalized over the years, and uh, there is a, a commission set aside to bring development to that particular uh, region, and uh, we hear of um, mismanagement of funds, we hear of um, fraud uh, for monies that, that would ordinarily be used to develop um, that particular community. What am I saying? Just the other day, it was the Accountant General of the Federation, but today, again, what we hear is that the EFCC has arrested the ex-NDDC MD Nsima Ekere over alleged 47 billion naira fraud. And the Niger Delta Development Commission. And, and so some people would say that it's because of the corruption. I mean, there's, there's a lot of concern that's been raised about the NDDC and uh, the fact that attention needs to be paid. And if you look at the fact that you still have the agitations ongoing, you ask yourself what's going on, even with the main resources that you have or the fact that you have a, um, you know, an agency or such, you expect to see a little bit of result, not exactly, not entirely, but you should mm -hmm. see. So um, it, it's for me, I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised mm. because a lot is going on. I think it's just when um, the authorities decide to pan, you know, the light, the or, light you know, area. such light to a particular area, and that's when they get the result. But it's very embarrassing. It's really, really embarrassing that those who should be custodian of the resources that we have are mm. taking advantage of the system. It just shows you the kind of system that we have. He probably wouldn't have gotten his way out of all of this. We're talking about 47 Seven billion naira. You Oops. hear 80 billion naira. That's a lot. Mm. He would definitely have persons in the system who have been aiding this process. And it's not possible it. that he will run by himself. No, it's not a solo and, effort, you know, So it's not a solo thing. Mm -mm, he didn't do this not. on his own. He mm. probably had people who have aided and continue to aid and abate this. You know, and yeah, we we'll talk um, of restiveness in the Niger Delta and the youth are taking up uh, all sort of uh, taking up to militants and all of that. When monies uh, that have been, you know, uh, earmarked for development in the particular region are not even be used for it, and some set of people are just uh, looting the money away. Uh, apart from that, you also also find out that sometimes when these resources come, you also see um, the agitation within different communities where they, they come out to money. cry and all mm. of that. There's no sure. sincerity uh, of purpose at the end of the day. So people would come out, uh, but they also have their different interest and reason why they are crying and clamoring for such. And mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. Personal interests always supersedes national interests. The reason why we are underdeveloped and we, we are the way we are today, uh, you could actually hear statistics and institution making reference to the fact that Nigeria is the capital, um, you know, the headquarters of, you know, poverty or mm. capital poverty, however you want to put it. It's because of the fact that those who should be calling or or those who are calling the shots, those who are manning the affairs of the country, at different strata, have decided to put their personal interests above. above national interests, above national yeah. interests, and that's the result, and that's what we're seeing. So we constantly see all of this. It's it's really it's really amazing. I'm just imagining that you you take out 47 billion naira, yeah. but you know the that's policy is going to go on. The, the law would say that you're not guilty until you're being proven by a court of competence jurisdiction. Sure. So over to the law, over to the judicial system and let's see how all of that pans out but we have to be very deliberate about the fight against corruption we cannot continue to mount one thing and act differently and behave in a certain way and like i always say you might never have the opportunity to become the president or the governor or a house of representative member 
or whatever it is. I mean, let's begin to look at the elective position, including the appointive. But in your little sphere, imagine that we're all doing what's obtainable and what's expected. You're doing the right thing in your different sphere. We will not we'll be where we are today. the changes that we have been looking for craving over the years. So we're here because we have allowed personal interest to rob us of national development and national interest. We don't care about the people. We don't care about any other thing. We care about ourselves. We care about, you know, the flamboyant lifestyle we want mm. to live as political office holders. I, what are you going to be doing for seven billion naira, <laughs> really? Like, well, how much can you consume? So you're taking that enough for not just yourself, maybe for your unborn generation, really. I it's, think you, it's, you, you, it's, you've, it's you've capped it all up. It's just um, selfishness and uh, not caring about um, the people who you're supposed to be, you know, fending for their interest. Well, that's it on our top trending for this morning. Our top trending returns again tomorrow on the breakfast. But this time around, we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll go straight to off the press. Stay with us.